Hello, air-cooled VW fans. I thought I would make a quick video um, to expand on a short that I just put out on YouTube a while ago with boring one of these cases out. Uh, it was actually a pretty lame video. It was like, I don't know, a few seconds long of <laughs> just a boring head going in here. No description, no nothing. So, anyways, thought I'd expand on it a little bit here. Kind of the uh, process that I do uh, for such a thing. I will be totally honest with you. That was the first case that I actually bored myself on my own machine. I have a fair amount of experience with machining. I'm not a professional by any means, but I, I have done my fair share and over the course of time have kind of worked out a process of the way that I like to do things. Um, a hole in a case is no different than a hole in anything else. So, there are a few things that we need to be aware of, though, when it comes to machining on engines. So, the first thing that we really need to worry about is the perpendicularity of this hole relative to a plane created by the center line of the crank and the center line of the camshaft. Okay? We don't care about this parting line. Nobody cares about that. What's important is the center of the crank and the center of the cam. Now, there's a few ways to do that. Um, the way that I do things is, first off, and I can't stress this enough, dress the case half. Okay, dress all the parting surfaces here. And when I say dress it, what I'm talking about is knocking down high spots. You see, there's some dings in here. Every time that there's a little ding in here, it displaces material. So you push material down and solids are not particularly compressible. So what happens is they're going to push up somewhere else where it's easier to push out of the way. So you're going to go all little high spots around the dings. Those high spots are going to do two things. If you don't clean them off, you're going to have leaks in your engine because it jacks the case has apart. Case halves apart. Ugh, can't talk. Okay, when I tore this engine down, I just for the heck of it measured some of these spots. And I even found the previous rebuilder had used Loctite, was it 574, it's an orange anaerobic sealant that a lot of people that are into Porsche 911s like to use. Not a big fan of that personally. But I took a micrometer and I measured some of those pieces and they were seven thousandths of an inch thick. someone had just slapped this together and paid no attention to the mating surfaces. You want to guess where I found all the leaks? It was around all those areas that were B in, left dings. So, most people will probably use a machinist stone or like a rectangular stone, and that's fine. Me personally, I much prefer a diamond lapping plate. Now this one's old and worn out, but it's 400 grit on one side. 1,000 grit on the other. And what I do with this is I set it on the case parting line and gently, gently go back and forth over all these areas. And you'll be able to feel, feel it drag, you'll be able to hear it. This one's already been done, so there's not a lot of action going on here. But it will take all those high spots down and you'll see it and feel it and it will start to skate over the surface once you get it smooth. Don't push down and hog away at it. We're not trying to take the whole surface down. We're just trying to get the high spots down to a point where it's not going to throw off our measurement. Okay. Once I had that, I kind of wanted to see where our cylinders were at. So I took this on my surface plate and I took a surface gauge and went around here. It's typical of these old motors to sag a little bit in here. It will droop down. And what I found when I set this on my surface plate is that this was pretty much dead nuts flat, except for this section right here, which honestly was really good. I've, I've seen cases quite bad, but this one was only down eight tenths of a thou here, and it was dead nuts even here and here. So with kind of a reference point, it was also even on the top and bottom of these cylinders. So what I did then, as I set it up on one, two, three blocks in this orientation, 
on the far edges of the cylinder. So I'm catching points over here and points back there, not using the middle. And then I just clamped it down very lightly. So that gave me a good starting point. So now, how did I find where the center line of everything was? Well, if you have a mill with a DRO, what's really neat is to take a ground pin and then this one right here, I put in my collet on the mill and it's got a ground edge on it here. And I come down on the Z axis and I touch the pin. Move over again, touch the pin, let it find home, touch the pin. Do the same thing everywhere here. And you can, by picking up those heights, you can see how straight they are. And also you can interpolate knowing the diameter of this and the diameter of this bore here, where the center line is. And I'll be honest with you, this case was actually quite good. Some of them are significantly off. You see that especially with type one engines. I've seen those two or three thousandths of an inch off of where the parting line is. But this was within four ten thousandths of an inch within the parting line at all points. So, for all practical purposes, we're talking boring holes. These right here have a quarter of a millimeter clearance on the cylinder. At least that's what I'm gonna shoot for. So that's about roughly 10 thousandths of an inch. So four 10 thousandths of an inch flatness on that side, we're, we're more than good enough to just lay this down on the mill and bore straight down. If it was really out of whack, you might wanna shim it up one side or the other, just so that you get down to the center line of the crank. If you're over a thousandth of an inch, I would probably start thinking about it. Two thousandths of an inch, I would definitely do it. Um, especially if you're gonna be decking in one operation here. Okay, that's, that's usually how it goes. You usually do one setup and then do all the machining here. My rule is to take the most out at one time the beginning. Uh, the reason I do that is because it's less liable to move around on you for future operations. This operation of boring the hole isn't particularly critical. There's a lot of clearance there. It doesn't really matter. Your cylinder can sit however it really wants to in there. What does matter though is this top surface and how flat it is to the bottom. Again, that center line between the crank and cam. That needs to be dead nuts flat can't have any sag in it, otherwise your cylinders are liable to leak at the head and leak oil at the base. Because this is already so close with the height across the peaks, I only need to take a few thousandths of an inch off. I'll probably just skim five thousandths off just to get a fresh surface here all the way across. So that's removing very little material. So if I were to remove that material and make this nice and flat first, but then I hog this out, I guarantee you, you'd see some bow again. Take the material out that's going to affect the structural integrity the most, and then do the final operations after the fact. So, next thing is fixturing, down, fixturing this down onto the mill. I'll quick take you over there and show you what I did.